In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On behalf of myself and all of our office and parish council, and on behalf of Huria Kathleen and our family, we wish you all a blessed Thanksgiving weekend, and tomorrow we pr pray that you will have a blessed Thanksgiving day. Because tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and because together we will not be celebrating that liturgy together, nor the Akathis for Thanksgiving, which is printed in the bulletin so that today or tomorrow you can take the time to read the beautiful Akathis for Thanksgiving. What's in the bulletin is most of it, but not all of it. But it should give each of us an opportunity to contemplate on all the great blessings that we all have received by the hand of God and by each other. It becomes easy, especially during this pandemic. It becomes easy as our lives become very busy and complicated to forget the most important thing. And that is to stop and give thanks for all good things. As a nation, we set aside this one day to give thanks to God and to each other. My father, confessor, fellow Alexander Schmemann, used to always say, the heart of a Christian is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving at every moment of one's life. One is always conscious that every breath is a gift from God. Every gift, earned or unearned, is a gift. And every good thing comes to us from God above. I'd like to take a little time this morning, and time limits what we can actually do. But I'd like to take a little time to just reflect on part of that service of the Architect of Thanksgiving so that we can prepare ourselves for the feast tomorrow before we plunge into the turkey and all the great food that we love to consume. Father Alexander and the Fathers of the Church remind us that in order to feast, we must first prepare. In order to feast, we must first fast. Before we plunge into the gifts, we should give thanks. So let's reflect for just a few moments. <coughs> In the first Kentuckian of that Akathist, we hear these beautiful words, glory to God for calling me into being. None of us would exist without the life and breath of God, for showering, showing me the beauty of the universe. I know it's hard in this city to look up into the sky and to see with your naked eyes the majesty of God's creation. But God has created a marvelous universe which most of us have lost contact with. For spreading out before me heaven and earth, like the pages in a book of eternal wisdom. God offers us all the earth in the kingdom of heaven itself, and yet we turn away from him. For each different taste of berry and fruit, glory to thee for the sparkling silver of early morning dew. Perhaps if we have a lawn outside, we see those beautiful droplets on the grass. But when you live in the countryside and you look as far as the eye can see, and you see that beautiful dew upon the earth, and you know that God has blessed us with the fruit of water, we give thanks. For the feast day of life, glory to thee for the perfume of lilies and roses. We sometimes smell a few beautiful flowers, but if you've traveled through fields of mint and lily and all sorts of wonderful gifts from God, we recognize how the air is filled with what God 
has given to each of us, and we give thanks for that great beauty. For the joy of dawn's awakening, glory to thee for the new life each day brings. Many throughout this globe will not wake up this day. Many will not breathe another breath of life. Yet you and I had the glory and the gift and the pleasure of waking up this morning. And we ought to give thanks to God for a new day, new life given to each of us. From the Kentuckian, we hear these beautiful words and we should reflect upon them because we often forget who really brings us great joy and great life. It says it is the Holy Spirit who makes us to find joy in each flower, the exquisite scent, the delicate color, the beauty of the most high and the tiniest of things. Glory and honor be to the Spirit, the giver of life, who covers the fields with their carpet of flowers, crowns the harvest with gold, and gives to us the joy of gazing at it with our eyes. Oh, be joyful and sing to him, alleluia. Perhaps we don't look out on the fields of grain to see what, the script, what this verse is referring to. We don't see that field that was once green now turn brown and ready for harvest to consume that grain. But yet we eat it every day. Let us give thanks. Father Alexander Schmemann, when we were all young seminarians in our teens and early 20s, would call us into the chapel at the seminary and prepare us for our own personal confession. And we would all kneel on that floor. There were no pews. We would kneel on that floor, sometimes it seemed like for an hour, and he would kneel in front of us, and he would read through this long list, and sometimes simply from his heart, because he knew all of us. And he would enumerate the many ways in which every one of us separate ourselves from God. Most of us entered that chapel saying, I don't know what I'm going to confess today. I don't think I have anything. And by the time he finished, we realized our list was far too long to confess to our father confessor that day alone. And so I pray that as I go through the rest of these verses, while we not contemplate upon our sins, but rather we contemplate upon all of those things that we ought to be thankful for every day, because every day is called to be Thanksgiving Day. It is a day in which we're called to turn to God and give thanks to God for all things great and small, and to turn to one another in thanksgiving. It continues, glory to thee, bringing from the depth of the earth an endless variety of colors, tastes, and sense. As I read that as I was preparing my sermon this Friday, I reflected on the day before as I climbed Mount Tremblant and beheld the beauty of the leaves, both as I entered the bottom of that mountain and as I looked from the top of that mountain across the valleys and in places across the lakes and saw the great majesty and color that God had colored the earth with. As I walked through the forest and the squirrels were running around busy, some would call them rodents, but in God's wisdom, he put that little squirrel there so that the forest could be sustained. That little creature created by God, and the one that I was talking to was about this high. That little creature planted many trees that one day as they scurry across that forest collecting nuts and burying them in hopes that they will remember where they are when he gets hungry when the snow falls. Thankfully, he forgets where he planted most of them, and they sprout into trees of life. How great is the wisdom of God 
and his beauty that we often miss as we live in our cities of concrete and steel. But let us behold what God has placed before us because we breathe the air that comes from those trees. It goes on for the warmth and tenderness of the world of nature, for the numberless creatures around us, for the depths of thy wisdom, the whole world of a living sign of it. On my knees I kiss the traces of thine unseen hand, enlightening us with the clearness of eternal life. Glory to thee for the love of parents, whether we think we have great parents or not. And most of us only realize how great our parents are until we become parents ourselves and later in our own lives. But without our parents, we would not be here. We would not have the breath of life. We would not have our human existence. And we ought to give thanks for the faithfulness of friends who so often in their own little ways make the hardships of life so bearable and fill our dark days with light and with joy, for the humbleness of the animals which serve me, even those which offer up their life so that we may eat. Some of us may not see those beautiful turkeys running around. I see them in my backyard back home. They give their life so that we can feast on them. We watch them all year long as they run through the yard and sleep in the trees and communicate with one another. They are beautiful animals. We eat them because they have offered their life to us and we ought to give thanks to God for them. For the unforgettable moments of life, for the heart's innocent joy, Glory to thee for the joy of living, moving, and being able to return thy love. Glory to thee for our unquenchable thirst for communion with God, which we participate in in this very liturgy. Glory to thee for the signs of thy presence, for the joy of hearing thy voice and living in thy love. Glory to thee transfiguring our lives with deeds and love. Glory to thee, making thyself known where man shows mercy on his neighbor. Glory to thee for what thou speaks in my heart. Glory to thee for what thou reveals to me awake or asleep. Glory to thee, giving us light. Glory to thee, loving us with love so deep, divine, and infinite that he offered his own son that we might have eternal life. Glory to thee, blessing us with light and with the host of angels and saints. Glory to thee, Father, all holy, promising us a share in thy kingdom, which we have not earned and cannot earn. Glory to thee, Redeemer, Son, who has shown us the path to salvation. Glory to the Holy Spirit, life-giving Son of the world to come. Glory to thee, O God, for all good things holy and most merciful Trinity, glory to you, thee, O God, from age to age. We have so much to be grateful for. Tomorrow, hopefully, we will take a moment to give thanks to God for all of his great blessings, for everything that he has given us, not just the food spread across our table, but to be thankful for one another to be thankful for the great things others have done for us and the little things, for the things that God has done for us in allowing our forefathers and foremothers to cross that great ocean, to bring us to a land where we are free to worship God and a land where we are free from bombs falling and people shooting at us. We have so much to be grateful for. Let tomorrow not only be a day of thanksgiving, but a beginning of a thankful heart that is thankful every day for the great blessings that we have. Because it's only in thanksgiving that anything becomes a gift. It's only in thanksgiving that we find true joy and happiness and meaning and purpose. May our hearts be filled tomorrow with the love and the mercy and grace of God 
and let us give thanks. Amen.